Hi, I'm Rev. Kara Watts at University Christian Church and I welcome you to our children's worship service. This is a special opportunity as we are embarking on week four of Compassion Camp, our online and virtual VBS program. Today we are going to talk about being along the way as we recognize God's spirit of compassion moving always and how we catch up and move along the way to help others. So let's start out with this question. Who is always there for Minnie Mouse? Yeah, what about this one? Who's always there for Mario? You know, Mario Kart, Mario Brothers. Who's always there for him? Exactly, Luigi. What about Woody? Who is always there for Woody? Yeah, who would Woody be without his buddy Buzz, right? Who's always there for you? Your family? Yeah. Who's always there for the sick? For those that are hurting? What does it mean to be there for someone? What does it mean to be present with them? That's what we're going to talk about this week. We're going to talk about what it means to be present, what it means to be there for someone. Because when we are really present with someone, then God's Spirit can work through us in helping share compassion with someone else. Sometimes being there for someone looks like being a good friend. So let's watch these kids and see what they think about being a good friend. What makes a good friend? A friend is somebody who you, you meet up with often. When people play with you. Always hugs me. Um, a good friend is someone who picks you up when you fall, makes you laugh, plays with you whenever you're sad and like just would just do lots of things for you. Helping you and just being kind. Give them some of my toys. <sighs> to be kind to each other and you don't argue. Or if they listen to you very nicely, we can play with them or we can play with somebody else. When you be kind to them and you never argue with them. Um, accepting for who you are and what you're doing every day. If they're kind to you, if you're ever like sad or angry. He's always been there for me to help me. If you're playing the game, you can let them join in. If they don't want to, you can just say, if you want to join in, you can. I think makes a good friend is that they take care of you and when they, if you fall over, they help you, they pick you up. I think a good friend makes you um, happy and is always lovely to you and it's always like funny and nice to you. Are you a good friend? I actually don't know, but I've got a lot of friends in the class who know that. We all have different ideas about what it means to be a friend, but what you heard throughout in each of those statements that each of those kids made was that they're paying attention, they're listening, they're connecting with their friend, they're looking to see if they're happy or sad, they're showing care by giving a hug or playing or helping someone when they might have trouble. Being a friend and being present with someone looks like just being there. Sometimes it means being quiet. Sometimes it means listening carefully. Sometimes it means playing or telling a joke or laughing together. Sometimes it might even be crying together. But being present means you're paying attention. You know, God is always present for us. God is always with us. God's Spirit moves and continues to move in our world. And sometimes we have to be really quiet and listen for that still, small, quiet voice of God. But we are always reminded that God is with us always. Here's a song that'll help us remember that God is always in our presence.
I hope that that song continues to remind you that God is always with you, no matter what. You know, in our story today, we hear about three women who are found in the Old Testament, Ruth, Naomi, and Orpah. And they experience a lot of sadness and hurt in their lives. They find themselves in a place that is not really their home, and they've got to figure out what to do next. And through that experience, they develop this incredible way of being present for one another. So watch this story from Ruth. In Judah, there was once a man named Elimelech, who worried about how his family would survive the famine. He took his wife, Naomi, and their two sons, Malan and Chilion, to the country of Moab. They settled there and made a life among the people there. Soon their sons married two women named Orpah and Ruth. Sadly, Naomi's husband passed away, and then even her two sons died too. Naomi missed her family and wanted to go back home, so she began the long journey back to Judah. As was the custom for daughters by law, Orpah and Ruth followed her. But Naomi insisted they stay home in Moab. Go back to your family. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with your husbands and me. Peace be with you. Then Naomi hugged them together, and they all cried. But Orpah and Ruth were determined to follow her. Naomi tried to persuade them, I do not want you to ruin your chance at marriage and having your own family. If you stay with me, you will have nothing, because I cannot give you anything. I have lost everything, and my heart is so bitter. They all cried together once again. Orpah decided to go back, but Ruth Bye -bye. clung to Naomi even more. Naomi said to Ruth, Don't stay with me. Go back with Orpah. But Ruth opened up to her. Don't make me leave you. Where you go, I will go. Where you make your home, I will make my home. Your people will be my people, your God my God, and where you die and are buried, I will be buried there too. I will be your family. When Naomi saw that she couldn't change Ruth's mind, her heart softened. She accepted Ruth, and they traveled back to Judah together. Ruth lovingly took care of Naomi. Let's think and imagine about this story. How do you think Naomi felt when she realized that she was all alone in a place without anyone there? How do you think Orpah felt as she went back to her homeland? How do you think Ruth felt when she decided to stay with Naomi no matter what? What does compassion look like? How were Naomi and Ruth present for one another? How did they care for one another? And how did they share that compassion? Think about these things and talk about it with your family because these are important questions that, even though this is a story from the Old Testament, it's a story that reminds us that we continue to do these things every single day to be present with one another and to experience God's presence with us that we can share with others. We are constantly practicing putting our compassion into action and it takes practice to learn how to be present, to learn how to listen, to learn how to experience the world around us, to be quiet, to listen sometimes. 
Here are some ideas for you to practice putting your compassion into action and getting better at being present. You know, one way you can do that is by taking a walk around your neighborhood, paying attention to the birds that are chirping, to the dogs that are barking, to the friends that are walking by on the other side of the street. Listen, what does the wind sound like as it moves through the trees? How hot is it or cool? Experiencing all of these things helps us learn better to be present, to experience all that we have. You can do that outside in your neighborhood, or you can even visit one of these places, our national parks, part of our nation's incredible, majestic beauty that God has created. Even though you might not be able to go to Alaska, you can experience it here. Our family pack is full of all sorts of links for different places you can explore, but I encourage you to look here in Alaska. You can repel vicariously with others. You can experience glaciers and majestic beauty. And you can think and talk about what that feels like with your family, with your friends. Continuing to experience God's beauty in the world helps us learn to be present. As you get better at putting your compassion to action with yourself, you can also figure out how to do that into the community. Mother Teresa says, we can do no great things, but small things with love. That's what we can do. We can share God's love in amazing ways. Our youth at University Christian Church have been participating in a sign project where they are doing something very simple. They're taking a yard sign, they're decorating it, making it fun and colorful and beautiful. And they're simply writing, you are loved on it. And then they place it in the yard of one of our members that maybe can't get out and be present with others as they are staying safe at home. I invite you to take part in that too. Your family will receive information on how to take part in that project via email and text. So take part in that, put your compassion into action. It is a small thing, but it is a great thing and a great way to share love. I hope that today you have experienced what it means to be present and learned that it takes a lot of work to figure out how to do that. Our story of Ruth and Naomi and Orpah tell us that God is always with us even when we have hurt and even when we do hard things. I want you to watch this story of what I consider kind of a modern day Ruth and Naomi story. It's about a group of children that live in Georgia, but what's unique about this group of children is that they're refugees. They are in the United States because their homelands from all over the world are not safe. They might be in war or in danger, but they have come to the United States for a place of safety and refuge. So they're in a land that they don't know, much like Ruth and Naomi found themselves. And watch to see how they create belonging and care, how they're present for one another, and. Just so you know, one of our favorites, the kid president, is going to bring us this story as well. Let's watch this together. On the road, on, on the road. road. <laughs> I think this next place you're going to really love. I haven't told you yet. Bathrooms. Actually, yes, we need to do a bathroom <laughs> stop. We are going to a place where there's something you love. Soccer. Kids and soccer, soccer dance, and it's with a group of kids from literally all over the world, and they're all survivors of war. But they come together to learn and grow as the Fuji's family, and you get to play soccer with them. Oh man, I played in a while. I'm gonna get humiliated. No, you'll be fine. You got this. I hope so. Brad took me to Clarkston, Georgia. It was there we met the amazing coach, Luma. She helps lead the Fuji's Academy, a place of healing for refugees more than 20 years, and their soccer league, the Fuji's Family. And that's just what it is, a family. For me growing up, I was always an outsider. My parents put me in schools where you know, I was the only Arab or the only Muslim in the school. 
And so I wanted a place where everyone can be whoever they want to be without any judgment, especially to kids and families who have been abandoned and who don't have their village. You know, it's like most of our kids are used to grandmas and aunts and uncles and cousins and every, and they come here and that's all gone. And so we kind of fill that role. This place, it's incredible. Everywhere I turn, we're making new friends. She took me around, she showed me everything. So a lot of the kids come with uh, little or no English, so English is a big focus throughout the whole year. And all our students will be the first in their families to finish high school, and about 80% of them will be first in their families to finish middle school. And we try to mix up our students as much as possible. We try not to have one ethnic majority. So in their home countries where they might be killing each other, and here are their friends and their teammates, and sometimes dating, but we don't tell their parents, so. <laughs> This place was amazing. They were creating art, learning how to do animation, writing, solving equations, and doing all this next to people who were really different from them. We found three best friends who were all from completely different places. Yeah, I left Syria in 2015. Because of the war, I went to Turkey. In 2017, I came to the United States. I'm from Sudan. Um, I went to Jordan for two years, and then I came to, US, to the USA in 2014. We were born and raised in Thailand. We came here in um, 2009. All totally different, but all best friends. A table where everybody belongs. He enjoys my culture, I enjoy his culture, I enjoy her culture. Just And I like to like learn new things about people, and this school is like the perfect place. We just came to the school, and then we meet all these beautiful people. Mason. <laughs> Abdul Malik, yeah. <laughs> all these beautiful people yeah. and Abdul Malik. <laughs> <laughs> it made us feel right at home, like we've known them forever, like we're best friends. I guess they learned that from Coach Luma. You know, people always try to come up with what makes great schools, and, and for me it's like if a kid feels safe and loved, that's what makes a great school. It's not that complicated. My home is this. This is my home. Like, I feel safe. Like, every day I come here with a smile on my face. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> like, I feel happy. Like, like, Coach Luma is always there to help us. My grandmother is the person I always go back to. Um, anyone that would come to her door, she would give whatever she had, you know, whether it was food or money. She's like, and her children would be angry at her. They're like, people are taking advantage of you. And she's like, it's not for me to judge. If someone asks for help, I give all that I can. And it really stuck with me. It's like, you give everything that you're capable of giving. She just does things for us. And we always find, like, looking for a way to pay her back. We ask her sometimes, she's like, learn and become successful. That's how you are paying me oh. back. And then I'm like, OK. Can never tell. <laughs> we can never tell if she's, like, happy or sad, because she's at the same, like, Facial, facial expression. Yeah. And then like, yeah. What do you like the most about soccer? It brings people together. Just put the soccer ball in there, like play, and you don't really need to know her language or his language. You find yourself communicating with others, not even using words. Win or lose, you put your effort in playing. Y'all are totally gonna whoop me today. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like for a fact. So you play soccer before? Yeah. What position? Mid. Mm. Well, then came the big test, soccer time. Now I heard coach could be tough, but those workouts... Go! Eight, nine, ten, ten one, two, two three, three, four, 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 That field was a picture of what the world can be like. People of all different types. Just being people, playing, laughing, cheering for each other. Maybe this is how it's supposed to be. We're not there yet, but every now and then we see glimpses of how things could be. Sometimes when I tell people about our work or something, they try to find excuses not to get involved because, like, oh, it's so big. I was like, this problem isn't that big. It's like a small school here in Atlanta, a school in Columbus, and you help your community or you help one kid at a time and then it becomes huge impact. Like I remember going to this uh, conference on college readiness and they put up all these charts saying what is going to contribute to being successful. And I walked out of there, I was like, we're screwed because everything says that not one of them will finish, you know, because they grew up in, in war and violence and poverty and no one in their family was literate and then they do it. It takes work, but that kind of work, it's worth it. People are people, and we need each other, people. 
We all need to belong. We all need a space where we can belong. Even her, and him, and you. To family, to team. Let's do this. Wasn't that an incredible story? Do you see how listening to one another, to be present with one another, even though these kids are from all over the world and are dealing with great hurt, they find a place of belonging and love and care and great camaraderie as they play soccer together and go to school together. We are all part of God's incredible creation. And as we've learned today, being present with one another is so important. And you can do that. You can practice that. And we learn that when we're present with one another, when we sit quietly, when we listen, when we share a smile or a laugh or a tear, that we are doing God's work of compassion and caring for one another. So keep up the good work. Keep being present. Keep sharing. Keep loving. And keep putting your compassion into action as you grow each and every day. Let us pray together. Loving Spirit, you are active and alive, always moving and stirring within and around us. Please be an encouraging wind at our backs, giving us open minds and soft hearts to follow where you lead. Make us flexible and present in each moment that we might embrace compassion by letting go of what we expected. Amen.